This is Tom Lee, Editor-in-Chief of NHM Catalyst, and we're talking today with Tarek El Sawe, who is a physician. He's the CEO of Reliant Healthcare in the Worcester, Massachusetts area, and the regional president for Optum Care. Uh, in that role, he leads a large group of physicians making the journey from uh, whatever their structure was in the past toward something approaching a single organization trying to push uh, higher value care, and that's what we're talking with him about today. Uh, that journey has been accelerated by the COVID pandemic, as I think everyone here knows. I think it's worth noting that this conversation is an editorial feature and is fully independent of Optum's partnership with NEJM Catalyst Innovations in Care Delivery. Um, it was set in process because I think Terry's one of the best young leaders in healthcare today. Tom, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So, Tarek, why don't you start by telling our listeners a bit about uh, Optum and the physician organizations that you are leading? Sure. So, uh, Optum Health uh, is probably one of the larger organizations in healthcare that a lot of people don't know that much about. And we really are one of the three pillars of Optum, which are Optum Health, which is the care delivery arm and there's Optum Analytics, which is the data arm, and Optum Rx, which uh, deals with pharmacy benefits. And if you really look at Optum Health, it um, has major components are Optum Care, which is where I work, I'm the regional president of Optum Care, and that's comprised of about 27 different uh, medical groups, our surgical care affiliates, and MedExpress, which is our urgent care uh, compartment. We touch about 18 million patients across 44 states. Uh, we have about 52,000 aligned physicians, uh, 12,000 advanced practice clinicians, and then we also have a behavioral health section, care services section, a population health segment, a medical benefits management, and a consumer in, uh, engagement section. So a really, really broad, broad organization. Um, that touches healthcare in so many different ways. So I expect that your doctors didn't just come out of medical school and sign up to become employed doctors at Optum. They must have come to it from many different directions in a variety of business contexts. And my guess is that uh, many of them are still figuring out that they're part of a bigger organization. Can you give us a feel for where they came from and uh, uh, you know, how heterogeneous the organization is? Absolutely. So I, I think we look like the rest of the country, Tom. I mean, uh, our, our docs come from organizations that uh, some of them are heavily steeped in fee-for-service or all they do is fee-for-service, and we have others that are fully engaged in um, risk-based care or value-based care uh, in all lines, whether it's commercial risk, Medicare risk, Medicaid risk. So they, they really come from so many different places. The vast majority uh, obviously have occurred through acquisitions. Uh, the organization is only 12 years old. Uh, but the evolution and the purpose is really, really clear. Our intent is to become as much of a value-based organization as we possibly can. And I think, you know, the, the, the reality is if you really listen to most people, it's not that they complain so much about the quality of care in the U.S. Yes, for sure, we can be safer and we can be more reliable. But the major issues really relate to access, affordability, health care inequity, provider well-being, wasteful spending, all the things that we've been talking about. But we are convinced, or at least I am <laughs> convinced, that uh, the way that we're going to get there is to further align our payment methodology and incentivize fixing those things. Because if nothing, if we haven't learned anything from COVID, there are so many parts of the fee for system, uh, fee for service system that are broken. This really allows allows us to align it in a much much more uh, complete way. 
You brought up COVID, and uh, I don't think any conversation in healthcare these days can go more than a few minutes without COVID coming up naturally. And my guess is that COVID affected the entire network of physicians that you work with uh, dramatically. It might be the first common big influence that they all really, really felt. So how did COVID play out for the physicians in your region? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, Tom, uh, you know, as I thought about the impact uh, of COVID, uh, it, it's been really multifaceted. There's sort of the impact you feel as a, as a person living in the U.S. right now and, and trying to navigate uh, as a physician uh, and as part of an organization. And, and as I'm looking at it sort of organizationally or when I look at the big picture, we have so many, there are so many clear-cut learnings, but I think it's really highlighted a lot of the flaws and the strengths. When I think about our public health system as some of the most brilliant and, and dedicated uh, uh, people working in it, but it's become really clear we need to significantly fortify and strengthen their infrastructure. Uh, the flaws when you're talking about how our providers felt it, there was an incredible difference between how providers uh, who are in a pure fee-for-service environment, they were really devastated by the impact of COVID. Uh, and I suspect that's going to be uh, continuing because I don't think this is a one-and-done phenomenon as we're seeing throughout the country. Um, we also have seen that, you know, whatever we've been doing in behavioral health and post-acute care isn't really enough. We need to do more. Um, it, it's, you know, taken a pandemic to finally make folks really see the value of telehealth in a really meaningful way and having better digital platforms, but we've also in some ways discovered it was more clunky than we thought, even though we had incredible rapid adoption. A lot of the folks that really needed it, we couldn't get it to them efficiently enough. So I think those were sort of some global learnings. Organizationally, I, I, did, I was incredibly proud of how uh, Optum as a whole and UHG as a whole handled it. I mean, we were able to navigate it without layoffs, without furloughs, uh, and the organization really took some extraordinary efforts to make our providers and patients feel safe during this time period, which I think is absolutely critical. And, and one of the, the, the things that you sort of are always learning, um, we saw finally some data in terms of our most recent surveys Patient experience scores who for many of our organization were sort of you know, flat or plateaued, uh, all took extraordinary jumps because that patients really noticed the effort that was going in into making them safer and more and, and us being more accessible uh, to them. I think the other thing that I you know as I thought about it, it was amazing and just sort of personally in terms of managing and leading things. Uh, I need to do a better job going forward of making sure that I, you remove barriers from people because when uh, the decision-making barriers are removed, uh, remarkable how much more nimble we become and how much more creative folks have become. So um, that is a lesson clearly I want to make sure that we hold on to and I don't go back and fall back into uh, you know business as usual before. Um, and I think personally, I, I don't know that I've ever been prouder to be a physician. Uh, I'm in awe of some of my colleagues. I think they have done remarkable work. And I think it really highlighted the fact that um, we were able to refocus on purpose and meaning in what we do every day. Um, so a lot of good things, a lot of bad things, and, and uh, but, I, but I think overall, if we can really focus in on capturing the opportunities coming out of COVID, uh, I think it'll be pretty remarkable. So it sounds like, you know, some groups were bearing more financial risk than others, and those groups uh, were uh, less injured by uh, financially uh, by the changes that occurred with COVID. Uh, the ones that were pure fee-for-service uh, probably took a, an enormous hit. Uh, but uh, you've painted the picture that of, uh, of an optimist, and I'm, uh, you and I are similarly optimistic, I think, <laughs> yeah. uh, in that um, uh, I think 
our colleagues did a lot to make themselves proud, and it also sounds like um, a lot happened to make them glad that they were part of a bigger organization uh, that could help them respond with, um, uh, you know, to the the need to do telemedicine well, for example, um, and uh, so that whatever ambivalence there might have been uh, to being part of a bigger organization. Uh, before COVID, my guess is it's probably less today than it was in 2019. I I would totally uh, agree with you. I, I think you know one of the difficult things, regardless of where you are, if you're in a really large organization, whether it's um, at a large academic medical center or an organization like Optum or United Health Group, there is always sort of this fear that. Um, you're going to lose the sort of battle for the hearts and minds of providers and patients. And I think it's responses like this in a time of crisis that really let you know a lot more about the organization than you otherwise would. People really show their, show their true colors when their chips are down, and the decisions that were made, I think, have earned at least certainly for, for me as a part of this organization and, and all of us have some degree of skepticism about how a, a organization is going to behave but uh, I honestly could not have been prouder. Well so in a perverse way, uh, in an unfortunate but uh, fortunate at the same time way, uh, COVID creates opportunities for you and so that, that makes me uh, want to throw out to you a question to wind up our conversation, which is uh, tell us what are you hoping that your groups are going to look like in five years? Uh, so I, I, I think these are really ambitious, but I think um, we have to be ambitious now. I think this is one of those, those things that also makes you come out of this COVID environment thinking, I need to think bigger. I, I'm hoping that all of us think bigger. And um, while I think these are ambitious, I don't think these are undoable. Uh, I think one, I would like us to become the prominent uh, physician-led ambulatory value-based healthcare system in, in the country. Um, because I think we really need to get to, we need scale to solve some of the, the issues. We have scale and we're gonna hopefully continue to grow. Uh, but we need to get to the point where we're delivering great care, but also at a cost that we can afford. And I think unless you have enough scale to influence the system as a whole, that would be very difficult to do. But I think clearly being the prominent value-based care organization uh, in the ambulatory setting is, is one goal. I think the other goal really needs to be one of the leading organizations uh, engaged in healthcare delivery research. Uh, we're fairly uniquely suited uh, given the scale uh, and access to data. And we have wonderful partners, uh, Optum Lab and United Health Group R&D, and already many academic institutions. So I really would like to see us develop a true footprint in that space. And I also would love to see us become the destination of choice for clinicians, whether they're in primary care or in specialty care, are really passionate about value-based care because I do think there needs to be a degree of passion and sort of uh, a very singular focus to do that. And I would say lastly, um, we need to get a lot better at actually meeting patients' preference on how care is delivered. We need to be a lot more personalized and becoming truly consumer-centric. I think if we accomplish those very ambitious goals, uh, not only will we as an organization be better off, but uh, honestly, I, I think we will be part of the solution uh, for the country as a whole. Well, that's a pretty good set of goals. Uh, you were pushing for uh, an, org an organization that's really delivering high value care, and me which means getting efficient as well as effective at doing things. Uh, one that's innovative, advancing science and what we know about uh, healthcare delivery, uh, one that addresses burnout resilience and uh, makes practicing medicine 
uh, uh, a great thing to do, and uh, then one that's patient-centered. Uh, good aspirations for all of us, and uh, we are rooting for your success, and I hope you'll be putting pressure on the rest of healthcare to keep up. So. Uh, we, 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 won't, we won't stop. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about it. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thank you so much, Tara.